Very excited to talk to both of you. Uh, this whole world, uh, I, I love everything about it. Uh, and we ended last season uh, with a little bit of a cliffhanger because we have this whole new world um, that is opened up with Guillermo and as well as um, finding out that uh, he is, um, for better word, the chosen one, I guess, uh, in, in a Van, Van Helsing kind of way. So I guess that's the first question. Where do we start? Is there like a big time jump or how we how do we move into this new season where we get to kind of confront that? Where we pick up right where we left off. So the incident just happened at the theater uh, with the vampires and now the consequences are uh, being displayed. <laughs> so we find Guillermo in prison in the basement uh, until, they, until the vampires know what they want to do with him. And I, I guess that's the, the first question too is, you know, uh, do you feel like uh, now there's a, a reckoning coming where they understand who Guillermo really is and what he can do? Or is this more along the lines of maybe a same business as yesterday kind of thing? I don't know. I think for a second there's, you know, there's fear. These vampires, like, you know, saw firsthand what he's capable of, but he did it for them. He saved their lives, uh, but they don't see that. They just see the the mass, you know, massacre of vampires in front of them. So for a second, it's, you know, touch and go. We don't know what's going to happen with Guillermo, but it's quickly decided that uh, maybe he should uh, use those powers for good. He could protect them. He did protect them. And thanks for, um, thanks to Nando's character vouching for him, uh, they decide to give it a go and to let him be their bodyguard. So we quickly get over that hurdle and then start this new uh, dynamic of like bodyguard and friends, bodyguard and vampires, still employers. So, yeah. <laughs> now, the one thing I love about Nandor is at, at times he seems like the want to be the most progressive, but he also got, goes backwards at the same exact time. I mean, how do you feel he's grown over these seasons where he wants to be part of this world, but also he despises it at the same time? Um. I guess he's, it's kind of devastating for Nando that, you know, he discovers that his uh, familiar is in fact an ass kicking vampire slayer um, that messes with his head. And I think that motivates him to kind of find a new relationship and find love. And, you know, that for him is an escape. He can escape all of his responsibilities. He, he's, he can escape all of his kind of failures as head of the house and the fact no one listens to him and he can go and put it all into a woman who's going to solve all his problems. And, you know, of course, he he goes in, he's too naive and he wants it all without earning it. And I think, you know, we've all done that from time to time in relationships where we think a relationship is going to solve all our problems and we don't have to think about anything else. And for about, you know, a week, two weeks, it's that. And then the bubble bursts and you realize that, you know, a, a real relationship takes trust, love, devotion, dedication, or a lot, many of the things that he actually has with Guillermo that he takes for granted. And I think he needs to go on that journey to, just, to remember what he actually has already. Well, it sounds like there's something you're not telling us, like a little deep, deep darkness in their relationship advice. So maybe you can put a book out as yourself or Nandor about relationships. So we'd, we'd probably enjoy that as well. Uh, now, uh, one of the things that uh, has kind of changed is we have less vampires in the area. So does that kind of play into this new world, too? Because uh, Guillermo just was just, you know, shooting gallery just but over over and over and over again so does that change how we kind of come into the season two does that affect things <laughs> i don't know i think harvey should not say because he killed everyone in the neighborhood <laughs> uh, uh yeah so so gizmo guillermo <laughs> <laughs> gizmo uh so guillermo um yeah so there's remember that there's like a bigger picture so they're the vampire council of the tri-state area it's pretty local which is a lot of vampires but there's a bigger picture you know there's a vampire council you know uh the world vampire council so uh it's just like uh politics i guess you know <laughs> you work your way up from like governor to like you know whatnot but yeah we're gonna see more vampires 
uh, who hear of the news that's happened, but they reward it. They reward that kind of, uh, you know, courage and, to, and ruthlessness into killing so many vampires because they still think that it was the house that killed him, the vampire. So it was Nadja, Laszlo, and Nandor, right. Colin Robinson, and they credit them for doing it. So even then, they still don't credit Guillermo. <laughs> they stick the credit and become the heads of the Vampire Council in the tri-state area. So it's kind of like this guy can't win. So it does add another uh, bit of salt to the wound. <laughs> For sure. And we do get some new kind of characters coming to this season, correct? And, and in the form of this lovely lady right here. So Kristen Shaw comes into the season too. Can you kind of explain who she is this season? Kayvon, you want to explain who? Yeah, she, uh, well, Christian Shaw, she uh, re, uh, reprises her character from season one. Um, she's the, um, what, what's her official title again? The guide. Her the title. guide. She's the guide from season one that takes us to the Vampiric Council where we're sentenced to death. So she comes back and, it, you know, it would, it's, was so awesome to have her back. Um, she's our first kind of new regular addition to our ensemble and man she just brought it every day she's so funny she's so talented she loves playing that part she plays it so well and she was just a lot of fun to play off and play with now uh harvey i gotta ask you um the growth of guillermo and the kick-ass nature while still having that it's almost like the childhood him is always there. Like, that, you know, he's, he always knows that he, he's growing to something else, but he's also still Gidmo who watches his mom and takes care of everyone and makes things are okay. So I guess, how do you feel he comes into this season? Because he is now a kick-ass vampire hunter killer if he wanted to be. I mean, he's definitely coming into his own. I feel that, uh, you know, you'd be surprised what a little confidence can do to a person. And He's starting to see um, he's more powerful than he thought he was. You know, as he thought he thought of himself as not powerful as a human. That's why he wanted to become a vampire his whole life, basically. And now he's starting to see that as a human, you can be more powerful than you think. You know, and uh, and your choices um, can lead you to the next chapter in your life. And so he's kind of going with the flow, but also trying to discover which avenue is the right avenue for him. So I'm really excited for him to be this badass and. He's changed, you know, small details. His wardrobe has changed. His, his hair used to be so perfectly lined and clothed into curls because he thought that's what the perfect look would be if he was a vampire. Because you know, uh, it was inspired by a film that he watched. Uh, and so the idea that now he's being a little more loose and not even, nothing has to be too perfect and nothing's too buttoned up and too, uh, you know, it's nice. It's nice to see him kind of be relaxed and be comfortable in his own skin. Now, Kayvon, I have to ask you, too, with Nandor uh, and, of course, Gidmo being there, there's a connection there more than just a familiar. It's almost family, uh, fam I guess, family in, in a way more than anything else. Um, does that grow this season as well? Or does uh, Gidmo kind of uh, uh, become something that's kind of a, an island outside of the vampires and, and things, too? Because I know that that relationship is always one of the most fun. Um, I would say that, yeah, this season, you know, Nandor is faced with this change in the dynamic that I think he might think is fatal to his relationship with uh, with Nan with uh, Guillermo. And so he does, he goes off on this journey of love, but actually what he's doing at the same time, he, you know, he is hurting Guillermo. He's neglecting Guillermo. He makes Guillermo feel rejected, forgotten unwanted and you know he doesn't want to accept that res that emotional responsibility that he has he doesn't want to hear from Guillermo that Guillermo is hurt by his actions he doesn't want to hear it and I think that is something that you know is very human you know we we experience these emotions where our actions hurt the people that are close to us they express this hurt but we're so fixated on whatever it is we're chasing that we don't want to hear it, you know? And I think that that is, uh, that's an important journey for them to go on. And it's a new journey and it's a new dynamic. And, you know, every season we're like, you know, where's this relationship going to go? Where can it go? And then they're like, it's going here. We're like, oh, wow, we didn't think of that. This is awesome, you know? So it's always, it's always a, a pleasure to, to, um, 
put another notch on the the Guillermo Nando bedpost of kind of emotional turmoil and you know their relationship uh, soap opera that you know people get a lot out of and enjoy and we I think we enjoy playing it as much as you guys enjoy watching it. 100 wow. percent so much fun with all this too you know i do have to ask too you know uh, of course uh, Kayvon, you you have your long hair and so it's kind of hard not to uh be noticed sometimes uh but harvey you had to put the glasses on and almost like you have to slouch a little bit i mean do either of you uh automatically get noticed or do you feel like you can do a couple of things to not be noticed in a vampiric way to kind of fade into the background uh because of your characters I, mean, I do everything I... in my power to get noticed <laughs> and it doesn't work. <laughs> I walk around like this, I fucking put my cape on, I go out in the middle of the night, and I'm like, hey, uh, nothing. <laughs> so if you've got any tips for me, I think Harvey gets a lot of love on the I, street. I, I think you're very imposing, oh. that's what it is. I think, oh, okay. you know, yeah, but I even like then that. people don't think it's me, like, because I don't you know i'm pretty loud i guess but people are like that's not him because they'll do double takes so they'll be <laughs> if i'm walking in the street they'll be like no <laughs> that's not him uh although one time when we we're in toronto and i was wearing a mask and walking in the street this lady pulled over with her car and was excuse me and i was like oh i don't live here because i'm from toronto <laughs> those nice directions and she's like are you are you guillermo and i literally had a mask on. and i was like oh yes yes and it was like oh i love that beep 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 They're like honking behind her so I love that shit. Yeah. And I was like, that was interesting. So that was the the only time I got recognized. <laughs> All right, we have time for one more question. All right, and uh, I guess the last thing is, uh, you know what, just for a little fun, uh, can Nandor tell Guillermo to tell us a little bit about this season? Guillermo, <laughs> uh, 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 there's a gentleman uh, who has a very exciting uh, CGI effect of uh, some flapping bats. Uh, behind him. Would you mind telling this gentleman uh, uh, what to expect in season three? I'm not your servant anymore. You can tell him yourself. <laughs> they say, I've had enough of this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I want to thank both of you so much. I love everything about this show. And it just gets better because it's it's not going away from the rabbit hole. It's going deeper. And that's just the beauty of this show. Everything about the characters and everything they do. The fact that they're in their own world and there's no apologies about it whatsoever. So I thank you all so much. We look forward to this new season. I know fans are going to have so much fun. Uh, and more importantly, it looks like you are having even more fun every time you come back. So hope everyone in your world is happy and healthy and uh, we'll hopefully talk to you again for season four.